Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks and Gany Titan. This is the last of my highlight games uh, on the tier 10 bonus event. As you can see, it's pretty much wall to wall tier 10s. Um, both sides, nothing else that isn't a tier 10 uh, game. It also um, was one of the highlights of the sort of um, Fatherland 2 because it allowed me the tier 10 bonus event. Uh, I got through the tier 2, tier 1 and tier 2 of the Fatherland uh, operations quite nicely uh, by playing the tier 10 tanks. I'm not sure whether the bonus events counted or whether it was just the base XP or exactly how they calculated it. But I was picking up pretty good average XP over the course of these uh, games so that I actually managed to complete those first two parts quite well despite the fact that I wasn't actually doing in terms of the general or at least the um, elite players doing very well um, statistically that is in terms of my stats probably wasn't doing that very well in terms of wins either a um, lot of very one-sided matches a um, lot of them very one-sided against me um, took me hours like I said to do some um, uh, the 10 victories here we have Kind of stupidity you see regularly uh, at the moment in World of Tanks. Top tier, well, okay, they're all top tier tanks, but still, an extremely valuable and lethal tank in the late game. Um, the ultimate drive by assassin, one of these French autoloaders, and he just cruises through the middle of the enemy team right at the start of the game, gets blown away. Don't do that, folks, it's just really not worth it. Um, Scout medals are not that valuable unless your team gets to shoot at um, everybody you lit up. Otherwise, it's a bit of a waste of time. Again, I'm trying to control the centre, or at least keep a very close eye on what's going on in the centre, because I reckon if the enemy get control of the village up here, um, they can project view range down into the our base. And we can do likewise if we manage to get control. Uh, it's not me that's spotting the FE215B103, but somebody was spotting him, and I have an opportunity to put a few rounds into him. So we get one. We probably won't get the second one before he gets behind the building. We pull back in case we were spotted. Um, and then we pull out again. And then he's parked there in a rather poor location. Now, that one went over his head, so it started him into moving. And somebody then set him on fire, and we finish him off. Um, that was another very valuable assistance to our team and the enemy are down four tanks already um, and we've spotted some more tanks now the guy down in the cap circle turns out to be AFK which is why I was able to get away with this um, these guys weren't shooting at me they weren't paying attention to me so I thought right, we'll put some rounds into them while we can Bounced one off of one of them there, um, don't know which one, and uh, we back off while we're reloading, but they're in pretty poor shape, uh, got a couple of rounds into both tanks, and they're still taking fire, because the tanks here in the centre are starting to push through, uh, we've cleared the town, so that whole flank has collapsed, and uh, that IS-7 is not shooting at anybody, so I'm going to stop and farm some damage. Uh, we bounce that one and uh, try to get him into the sides there where it's a bit weaker. We get one through and we get another one through. At this range it's different than over the T-57. The, um, the accuracy is pretty good but it's not it's not great. It's not as good as the single shot uh, American tanks. But now we're what? 8-2? Uh, we were 8-1 at one point. And the enemy haven't even reacted like there's a JPZ E-100 heading in still advancing. Uh, I mean he knows people are going to come around behind him and he's in the middle of an open field driving forward and then he turns his back to everybody when um, and he takes fire uh, just in case like, it might have been difficult. E100 is well he's there he's as good a position as he's going to get and uh, he's decided to make the most of it. Some idiots in the gap circle advertising his location and that uh, E50 is still advancing um, even better off just heading down and covering the low ground there the rocks between me and him 
He's tracked anyway, he's not going anywhere, and we just finish him off. Uh, so that's it, it's pretty much over. But we've managed to pick up 13 damaging ribbons so far. Um, front of an E100. Well, we're firing heat because that's all we've left. Uh, we managed to get a round in. We're not going to get near the artillery. And I've no idea where that light tank is, but I presume he's somewhere to the north because uh, we pretty much swept the field and the rest of the side, so um, there is kind of no place else for him to be. Uh, he must have been with the crowd, however we're capping. So it's problematic whether we'll find him or not, but it was uh, an extraordinarily one-sided game in many respects. Albeit one where I managed to pick up quite a lot of damage and quite a lot of assistance damage as well. Um, I have a pretty good view range on this tank and crew has situational awareness and recon. So uh, as I have optics, I don't know whether I have optics or not. I may actually have optics on it as well, as well as vents. Um, uh, so there we have it, victory. And then we get to see the final uh, score. So 185,000 silver, which is a lot of silver. Uh, we get the high caliber, we get a second class mastery, sniper and confederate. Um, which I think is extraordinary, I mean, okay, the base experience is decent, but it's not huge, but like, that's 9,000 combined damage. Um, which I'm pretty sure is definitely higher than I've ever scored in this tank before. Um, I've done over 5k, but... That's 5.5k damage, and I have gotten a first class mastery in this tank previously, so um, looks like the um, the mastery tank requirements have gone up considerably since I got my last uh, first class mastery in this tank. There is a measure of player skill, uh, W in 8, and normally I pull in the dark green, which is considered to be good, to the light blue, which is uh, very good, um, occasional dark blue. But since I started playing the uh, tier 10s, I was mostly in the uh, light green, which is just above average, which is kind of where I was normally about a year ago. And the last set is today's uh, figures, where I was playing mostly the Pershing, uh, the M26 Pershing, and I was back up into the blue. So yeah, it's a lot tougher. And now I'm going to give it a rest for a while and go back to the uh, grind on the tier 8, which is pretty much what I started, and maybe the occasional foray into premium tanks to re-earn the silver to buy new tanks so thank you for watching the video i hope you enjoyed it if you do please consider giving it a like and if you haven't already done so please consider giving the channel a subscription uh, bye for now and i'll catch you all again soon